Hello guys and welcome. In this video I'm gonna start talking about netcode for entities. I have already posted a video about the basics of the unity dots. So in order to follow this video you need to actually know the basics of entity component system and how dots work. So if you want to create a large scale multiplayer game, netcode for entities is the best option for you. But unfortunately, it is still new and a little bit complicated to set up. So I have decided to create a video series and start using netcode for entities. So these videos are not going to be project oriented. I'm not going to create a specific project or game. I'm just going to go into the basics of the netcode and I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So to start, I've created a new Unity project and inside the package manager, I've installed entities, entities graphics, and obviously we need netcode for entities. So you can go ahead and install those packages. They are no longer preview packages, so you could easily find them. Now in this video, I'm just going to focus on making the connection. I'm not going to spawn anything. We're not going to do anything complicated. First of all, we need some scripts to do that. And uh, let's create a folder for our scripts. And inside this scripts folder, I am going to create a new folder. And I'm going to put my netcode related scripts inside this folder. So right now, we haven't created any script. We haven't done anything. We just installed some packages. So if I play the project, and as you can see, nothing happens. If we go to the window in the entities, we open hierarchy. You see that here we have a server world and a client world. So basically, the second we play the game, even if we haven't wrote any logic for our connection, it's just going to automatically create two worlds for us, one for the client and one for the server, and it's going to connect these two worlds together. So that's cool, but what if we want to publish our game? We are not going to be using editor. We are going to use an actual dedicated server, which that dedicated server is going to have an IP, and we need to use that IP to connect to that server from our client. So I don't like this auto connection stuff. So I'm going to do everything manually. And to do that, let's go to our netcode folder and I'm going to create a new script. Let's name it auto connect bootstrap. So let's go to this script that we created. First, I'm going to say using unity netcode and I'm going to inherit from client server bootstrap. So basically, we are going to intercept the connection by overriding the initialize and we're just going to return false and we tell netcode to do nothing because we're going to do this manually. So if we go back to the Unity editor and start the project again, and if I go to the window inside the entities hierarchy, you see now that there is a default world and that's it. We no longer have a server world and a client world. So we're going to do everything manually. Let me stop this and go to the script to manage our connection. Let's create a script and I'm going to name it connection manager. So our connection manager is going to be a mono behavior. And as you might know, in order to connect our clients to our server, we need to define an IP address for our client to connect to. And we also need to define a port. Now, if we go to the editor, I can create an empty game object and name it connection manager. And we can simply attach the connection manager. So let's open the connection manager again. Let's create the start function. And I'm going to create another function, name it connect. So inside the start function, we're going to call the connect. But before actually getting into connecting the server and client, let's actually try to detect whether our build is server or client. So to do that, I'm going to create an enum inside my connection manager and I'm going to call it role. The server client role is for the editor only. So if we are in the editor, we want our editor to be both server and client. But if we actually got a build for our project, we want to be able to detect whether that build is server or client. And we can determine that inside the start function. 
So we can go ahead and create a variable here. The variable is going to be of type role. Also, it's going to be static. I'm going to check the application is editor. So if we are running in the editor, obviously, our role is going to be server client. We are going to add an else if saying that if our application platform is Windows Server or it is Linux Server or OS X Server. So basically, if we take a look at our build settings of our project, here we have a build option for a dedicated server. So eventually, when we want to build our server and publish it on a dedicated server, we're going to use this build option. And if we publish our project using that option, this part of condition is going to be true. So role here is going to be obviously server. And at the end, we are going to add an else saying our role is going to be client. So now that we have a role, we can go ahead and inside the connect, I am going to define two variables, the server world and a client world. They're both going to be of type world, which exists inside unity.entities. So let's go ahead and actually create a world for our server. I'm going to check if our role is server client or if our role is server, we are going to create the server world. And similar to that, we are going to check to see if our role is server client or client then we're going to create a world called client world. We can use client server bootstrap, create client world, and for the server, create server world. And as you saw before, when we start the project, there is a default world automatically gets created. So let's actually go ahead and destroy that world. So I am going to create a for each loop. I'm going to loop through all the world and if the flags of that world is world flags dot game i'm going to dispose that world and then we can just break so basically we're just gonna delete that default world because we don't need it we only need the server world and client world so after this depending on the value of the role we either have a server world or a client world or both of them. So here I am going to actually check if our server world is not null, then our default game object injection world is going to be server world. So I'm going to assign that. I'm going to do an else if, if the client world is not null, then I'm going to assign the client world to that. So let's review this. So far, we've determined the role of our project. And after that, we have called this connect function, which is going to destroy the default world and create two separate worlds because we're in the editor. So two worlds are going to be created. But these two worlds are completely separated right now. If I go and play this, actually, we can see both of these worlds inside the entities. So here is server world and this is the client world. And to actually check the connection between these worlds, we can go to the multiplayer and play mode tools. We can select that. There is two options here called server world and a client world. So server world currently is not listening. Not listening means it's not looking for any clients. So we need to make the server start listening for clients. And then our client, as you can see, is not connected to anywhere. And when we start listening using our server, we can use our client to connect to the server. There's actually a cool option here. We can add a bunch of dummy clients called thin clients. That's a tool for testing. We're going to use that later. But for now, let's just focus on the one client and one server. So as you can see, they're not connected and it is not listening. So if I stop this, let's go back to the connect function that we have here. And now let's start listening if our server world is not null. So we can create an entity query using the server world entity manager. We are going to pass network stream driver. And now we are going to get the singleton of the network stream driver. 
the read and write value of it. And then we're gonna start listening using client server bootstrapped default listen address. So this is basically the local address. We don't need to change that for the server. We're gonna do that for the client and we're gonna use the port that we have determined up here. So that port we're gonna use. So that's for our server. Now, if we start the project, you will see that server should be listening. So let's go to the multiplayer play mode tools. You see that our server world is now listening, which means it is waiting for the clients to be connected to it. As you can see, that is the local IP which server is using. And that is the port that we have determined for the server to start listening on. So our server is now ready. Now let's go ahead and actually do the client here in the connection manager. Let's go back to the connect function here after our server world is start listening. Now let's check for the client world. We are going to create a similar entity query, but this time we're going to use client world entity manager to do that. And for the server, we started listening, but for the client, we are going to connect. For the connecting, we need to pass two parameters. The first one is client world entity manager. And for the second parameter, we need to pass a network endpoint. This endpoint is basically an IP address and a port number that our client should connect to. So this is where this IP address that we have defined kicks in. So we need to create an endpoint using this IP address and this port. And by the way, when we publish our game, the IP address is not going to be this IP address. It's going to be the IP address of our dedicated server. So let's go ahead and actually create an endpoint. To do that, first, I'm going to create an IP address, call it server address. So it's going to be IP address parse IP. So I'm going to parse the IP address we have here. And by the way, that exists within system.net. So let's go back. And after this, I am going to create a native array and let's call it native array address, new native array. So I am going to pass the server address, get address bytes dot length. So I'm going to initialize this using the length and for the allocator, let's just use temp. Now we actually need to write the bytes using copy from, and I'm going to pass the server address, get address bytes, and I'm going to put it inside the native array address. By the way, this is not very important. So even if you don't exactly know what is happening, it doesn't matter. Just do this steps and your IP address is going to be converted to an endpoint. So we're going to create a network endpoint and I'm going to set the raw address bytes to the native array that I've created. And then simply we can set the endpoint.port. Long story short, it's just going to create a endpoint and this endpoint contains the IP address and port number of the server. So we can simply pass the endpoint and that's it. Now our client is going to connect to this IP address and this port number, wherever that is. Right now it is the local IP address, but if there is a dedicated server out there, you can just change this IP address and connect to that dedicated server. So this is how I like to do it. Basically, I'm doing everything manually. So now you have control over your connection between server and client. And if actually, let's go to the editor and let's play it. If I go to the multiplayer and the play mode tools, you see that our server is now listening and our client is actually connected. Now we should have two worlds in our hierarchy, the server world and the client world. And these two world are connected to each other. So that's pretty much how you do the connection using netcode for entities. And also here we can add a bunch of dummy clients. For example, we add six more clients. And as you can see here, it is going to create it for us and we set it to zero, it's going to disconnect all of them. That's actually a very cool option that we have and it makes our work much easier. But netcode is still 
very complicated and it is still under development so hopefully in the future with newer updates they could make it easier to use so i hope you find this video useful and please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so good luck and thanks for watching